Turn with me to uh, Timothy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hi, young lady. Glory. Thank you, God. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Better late than never. Turn me to Timothy chapter 1. Tim Ch Timothy chapter 6. First, First Timothy chapter 6. Verses 20 and 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, and oppositions, the oppositions, oppositions of science falsely so called. In other words, there is true science. And then there are oppositions of science that's falsely so called. In other words, they say it's science, but it's really not. You see, true science will always confirm the word of God is true. Yes. But fake science rejects the word of God. Mm -hmm. For some professing this false Science for some professing have erred concerning the faith. You know what happens if we get our eyes off on you heard of fake news, right? Yeah, fake news. We got fake science. Yeah, come out with fake science before they ever come out with fake news. <laughs> but anyhow, fake science is going around. The world is so ingrained in fake science. Yeah, sure. Over hundreds and hundreds of years, we had great scientists in the world and many many of them were born again Christians mm -hmm. they believed in creation just like the Bible says and they were these were these were mighty so they came up with great ideas that I believe God gave them the ideas yes yes like Isaac Newton he was a great scientist he he he, he figured out the whole thing about gravity he fi figured out the whole thing about you know, it wasn't just an apple fell on his head. He figured out the whole formula for gravity. Mm -hmm. he, he was a brilliant scientist. But he also was a devout Christian. And so he, like, spent his life, he put Christianity first in his life, before science. And so he was, like, trying to figure out the date of the, of the rapture of the church. That was a big mission for him. Even though Jesus said no man knows the day nor the hour, he was still big on that, uh, of trying to figure out when Jesus would so he, he was a devout Christian. Yes. A lot, of, a lot of these guys, I mean, I've got 15 pages of scientists that were devout Christians throughout the, throughout the last few hundred years. i got pages and pages of wow. guys who invented the batteries and all kinds of, invented all, everything almost. And they, were, they had the big, big awards for science. Oh, yeah. Now, right now, if you're a scientist that believes the Bible, they will not do anything. They will not even accept you as a scientist. They say, you're not a real scientist. Wow. You're not a real scientist if you believe the Bible. If you believe that God created the heavens and the earth in six days, then you're a heretic. They will not accept you. They will kick you out of college if you're a professor and profess that. They will kick you out. Even if you're, even if you're a brilliant scientist, you know what they do is that any, any proof that you come up with that proves the Word of God, they just reject it out of hand. They will not look at it. They have, they've had recently, they've, had, they've been finding soft tissue in dinosaur bones. They've been finding veins and, and blood stuff in dinosaur bone bones. Well, this one woman, she, she was a, a, a person who digs up dinosaur bones. She was at one of the big universities, and she's a big, pretty big person, I mean, big name person, and uh, she, they found this one, and they had to, they had to break it to, to get it into the plane, uh, but anyhow, when they, they got in, they looked like there was, looked like there was some weird stuff in the bone or something, and so she put some acid on it or something so to d disintegrate the, the rock around it and stuff, and it just disintegrated all the bone. There was like some stuff left over in there with soft tissue. And she started thinking, that can't be. This is, 
65 million years old. That can't be soft tissue in there. And so they started studying it. And it was soft tissue. And had blood vessels in it. And had blood platelets in it. Pretty wild. It could, could have been over a few thousand years old. But that's a heretical thing. So she was scared to tell the, to the college. So finally, she published it, and they fired her from the college. <laughs> so she went and got a job in another place, and she still comes up and digs bones in the same area. <laughs> but so when, after that happened, they decided to go ahead and start checking other. They never checked before. <laughs> Why? Because it's impossible for it to be there. Why would you check for that? So when they decide to go ahead and start checking some other dinosaur bones, they found almost every one they check has that stuff in them. But they don't want to accept that. Yeah. Well, there's got to be some way yeah. that that stuff can last 65 million years. <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah. We just don't understand how that can last. But it has to. Because we know these things are 65 million years old. Well, how do you know? Because of the layer of earth they're in. We know that. Because of the layer. Well, how do you know what, how that layer of earth? Well, it's because of the dinosaur bones that are in that layer. That's, how, <laughs> that, that's the truth. <laughs> they, they, they give the, now, the truth, is, the, the true truth is, there was a great flood that covered the whole earth. Yeah. Every place on the earth. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. And the evidence proves that. Even on mountaintops, they found fine marine marine fossils. How is that possible? Because it was covered with water at one time. The tall mountains weren't that tall before the flood. All that, when the land masses spread out, that squished up the mountains real tall. Mm -hmm. And that was after the flood. It wasn't millions and millions of years ago. It was just a few thousand years ago. 6,000 years ago. Well, it was actually 4,500 years ago. About 40. 4,400 years ago that the flood happened. That's been a while, but not that long. No. Before the flood, people lived to be over 900 years old. Over 900 years old. Just imagine that. <laughs> Reptiles grow their whole lives. They never quit growing. We went down to Okie Pinoki Swamps one time when I was a kid. I remember this. There was this giant alligator down there. Was, this thing was huge. It's probably... Almost, it was probably three quarters as long, long as this row of seats here. That thing was a huge thing. They said that alligator, we estimate, is 125 years old. He said, just keep growing. Well, just think, the animals before the flood, they kept, just kept growing. Things before the flood just kept growing. Even these giant sea turtles, have you seen those giant sea turtles? They get real big. They're like 150 years old. That's how they get so big. They just keep growing. When they get to be that old, let's keep growing. So what happens to all these giant lizards, they just kept growing for hundreds of years. A lot of animals live longer than people. Did you know that? Have you ever seen a parrot? Anybody ever seen a parrot? Yeah. We used to have parrots. There's little parrots. And there's, we had big parrots like that, didn't we? But I made money on them. I'd buy them when they were young and I'd get them talking and I'd sell them and make a profit, make a few hundred bucks a, a piece on them. And my wife hated them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they live to be longer than people. They live to be, they don't know how long they live, really. They live to be uh, like 125 to 150 years old. They have, because there's people that like, they, and they're, and their kids just inherit them, they pass them down. They live a long, long time. Yeah, that's a fact. But they're expensive. But they live a long, long time. But there's, there, there's people that used to live a long, long time. They find these, these uh, <coughs> skeletons of, of, what's they call this? Neanderthal. Uh, huh? Neanderthal. 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 They have like a bigger skull bigger ridge, and their brain capacity was about 20% bigger than ours is now. Well, that was men before the flood. They even got bigger than we did. 
before the flood, there was there's a lot of big people. They were smarter than we are. They had bigger brains than we did. We're, 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 we've, we haven't got better. We've gotten decreased. We, we just have gotten dumber and dumber and dumber. <laughs> we're not getting smarter and smarter. We have more knowledge now than they had back then. But they just, when they started increasing in knowledge, God separated them out like the Tower of Babel. They were building a skyscraper. And God said, this thing they began to do. He said, now anything they could imagine, they could do. That's what he said. He said, so I'll separate them out and confound their languages. So now we're to the place where knowledge is increasing. Like it says in the book of Daniel, knowledge will increase, it says, exponentially. So we're at that place right now where knowledge is increasing exponentially. I used to sell World Book Encyclopedias, and when I was selling World Book Encyclopedias, they told us, if a person has a set of encyclopedias that's over 10 years old, that they're outdated because knowledge doubles every 10 years. Now knowledge doubles every two days. Yeah. But now we don't have encyclopedias anymore. Yeah. Like those encyclopedia companies yeah. went out of business because of the internet. Everybody can just get on the internet and see anything they want to see. Instantly. Yeah. Instantly. Yep. Yeah. Just type it, search it. So anyhow, my whole point is as a Christian, we need to not embrace the world's science when it goes against what the Word of God says. We need to believe what the Word of God says. We need to believe the Bible is true. Yeah, every bit of it. The Bible is true. Yes. The Bible says in six days God created everything. In six days. And on the seventh day God rested. Six days God created everything. Now God said in his word, he said, God foretold the end from the beginning. And then Peter said, concerning end time things, he said a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day with God. He's talking about end time stuff. So the apostle Barnabas, he wrote an epistle, and it's in the early Bibles before, before they didn't put it in at the 385 year after Christ canonization of the scriptures. But it was in before that. And so, the, the epistle of Barnabas. And Barnabas says in his epistle, this was 2,000 years ago, Barnabas said in his epistle, he said, Jesus told him, the Lord spoke to him and told him, that the six days of creation each represented 1,000 years. And so it represented 1,000 years until, until the end. And then the th day of rest was the 1,000 year, year rest in the earth. That's the, the thousand year millennial reign. So, so it's cool. We we're at the six thousand year mark. We don't know exactly the date, but we're, we're, we're right there at the, about the six thousand years. Because there was about four thousand years from Adam till Jesus, now there's two thousand years about from Jesus to us. That's right. From Jesus' crucifixion, it, about two thousand years is about like 2028 to 2032. I mean, that's what they're estimated from his crucifixion. And then in, in Haggai, is it Haggai where it says Jose. Hosea? Hosea, it says that it, it describes like Jesus' crucifixion and said it would be about two days or 2,000 years. And then a third, in a third day, he would redeem his people, set them free. Right. He'd bring us up. Amen. Hallelujah. Bring us up. He'd bring us up. I'm ready to go up. How about you? Yes. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. We just need to be ready. We need to follow God. We need to be out ministering to people. I, was, I do have this Uber driving. And I, I, like, I like give a big chunk of my Uber money to the church. Yes. And, uh, and then I get to minister to people. And yesterday I was out. I, was out, I, I stopped at a quick trip to, to eat something. And I never sat out there to eat. I always take the food up with me. And, but I sat there. I said I wanted to sit here in, in the parking lot. So, and that's the first time I've ever done that. So I sat there in the parking lot, and I had a guy come up to me. And he, he looked kind of poor. And I thought he was going to hit me up for money. So I, I sat there, and I was eating. And he, and he was very polite. He said, he said, sir, he said, I'm a veteran. He said, and I'm a Christian. I'm a born-again Christian. He said, I'm hungry. He said, could you, could you get me something to eat? And I said, I'll come in and get you something to eat. So we went in, and... I said, get whatever you want, and you got whatever you wanted, and I bought his food yesterday. So, 
And you know what? When I did that, I felt really good. Because Jesus said, I hunger and you fed me. Yeah. And they said, when did you hunger and fed you? He said, when you've done the least of the deeds, you've done it unto me. Yeah, I, I thought I thought about Fair that. that been, I still didn't do it. You know? And I didn't think about that. I thought that could I mean could be being you know the Bible says it, you could be entertaining angels, and then you entertain angels going to work. And if you get a cup of cold water in his name. That's true. Yes. That's what he said. That's right. That's Amen. Right. But anyhow, I get and I get to I get to minister to a lot of people doing this stuff. And and then I then I get money to, to give to the church too. So and I get to keep some of the money. So I keep some of the money. But anyhow, uh, but I get I get to I get to minister to a lot of people doing that. I mean, I, I see people from all over the world. I mean, I picked up three guys from three or four guys from China one time from Beijing, China. They were going out there to that IHOP deal out in, in Grandview. I took them out there to Grandview. And I have these little I have these little signs in, in the back, and they say. That you know, like guys is the most important man in the world, or something. He said, "I may not always do this, but I do this." And, and I have it. It has that picture of that guy on there. It says, "I may not, I don't always tip, but when I do, I tip my awesome Uber driver." Yeah. So, so I drop. I got to talk to him about the things of God and stuff. And I pulled all off. I grew it to drop them off. They step and the guy, one of the guys, hand me a ten dollar bill. He said, "I don't always tip, but when I do, I tip my awesome Uber driver." <laughs> 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 but anyhow, I think it, in our lives, we get opportunities to minister to people. Yes. We, just, we just need to let God lead us, yes. God direct us. One time, I used to drive a semi truck for, for Simmons Manufacturer. I was a local driver in the Kansas City for the last about a year and a half that I worked there. And uh, I, had, I had my truck broke down and I was in the shop, and, and one of the, my dispatcher's assistants. She was going to take me over to pick my truck up. And so we got into her car, and, and she started telling me. She said, now, she didn't, I'd never met her before. I didn't know her. She didn't know me, and she said, it was right before Thanksgiving. She said she was getting ready to go to Thanksgiving, and she hoped she made it back in time before her mother passed away. And I said, is your mother doing bad? She said, yes, yeah, she can't eat. She's on the verge of dying. She can't eat. And, and I just felt impressed. I said, I'm a Christian. I said, we believe in divine healing. I said, uh, would you like me to pray for your mother? She said, would you do that? I said, sure, I'll do that. I'll pray for your mother. And I prayed for her mother. And then she got back a few weeks, a couple weeks later, she got back. and She came back and talked to me. She said, did you pray for my mother? Like, kind of kind of angry. You know? <laughs> I thought, and I thought, yes, I did. I, I did pray for your mother. And she got a big smile on her face. She said, it, said, it was really just amazing. When I, as soon as I got there, she said, just suddenly, my mother could eat. And she said, she has turned around 100%. And she, and she just is doing great. And so then, then, that was about a year before I left. Well, that was a few months before I left. And maybe six months before I left. And so, so then, right before I left, she came back to my area. We were in a different area than the main office. And she came back to my area. She knew I was going to be leaving. She said, I just wanted to talk to you before before he left. She said, you know what happened with my mother? She said, I, she said my mother's passed away now. She said, you know, I think it was about, I don't know how long it was. But anyway, she had passed away now, but she was old. But uh, said, but I just wanted to tell you, but because she got healed, that she gave her life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then she got a big smile on her face, and she said, and I did too. Yeah. So, so they both, and then it's just over, just let God show himself mighty, you yeah. see. God wanted to show, wants him to show himself mighty. The Bible says the goodness of God draws people to repentance. Yes. If we would just be sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. If I wouldn't have said, well, I'm, I'd like to pray for her. Would you like me to pray for her? And let God give God a chance to do something. Yes. Those two souls, they both came to the kingdom of Amen. God. Just because of that. It wasn't me. It was God. Yes. We just need to give God all the praise. Yeah. Give God all the glory. Yeah. Give God a chance to do mighty things. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Sometimes I'm sitting in the airport and I minister to other drivers in the airport. A few days ago, I was ministering to a lady driver in the airport there, and, and she was telling me she had she had a problem with her jaw, and and I said, "Would you like me to pray for you?" She said, "I would." And so I laid, I stuck my hand inside her. I said, "Can I touch you?" 
said, you, you can't. So I stuck my hand inside her car, and I just laid my hand on her jaw and just prayed for her. And I believe God wants to do those kind of things, to touch Amen. people's lives. Amen. But we just need to be there for people. We just need to kind of be, I mean, you don't have to be, you don't have to be pushy. Just let God lead you. Yes. This is not about me, but okay. I have a friend that uh, it's been a few years now. Uh -huh. Anyway, somehow I came, we came into our, each other's lives, and uh, she had medical problems, and um, and I would take her to the doctor, and I get you know groceries, whatever, you know, just because that's what God tells us to do. Sure. And one day she just surprised me. She says, Karen, thank you for being Jesus to me. Praise oh, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't that Amen. We that's should be. We should. Yep. See, that's we should people should good. see when they see yeah. it. Yeah. When people see us, they should see Christ yeah. in yeah. us. Yeah. We just need to be. We just need to follow God's way. Glory. Uh, thank you, Lord. I didn't do anything <laughs> I thought was special. I was just trying to help her. Lord, you know? yeah. That's thank what you, she Lord. saw. Thank you. Amen. That's good then. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Glory Thank to you, Lord. Lord. I guess that's my message. Hallelujah. Praise Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. I want to pray for my mom. She's been, she fell last Thursday in, in our kitchen again. And uh, she didn't want me to. I, I thought we should call an ambulance, but she didn't want to do that. So, anyhow, she, but she's hurting a lot. So, she hasn't she hasn't been been able to come to church. And I think she kind of wanted to go Sunday, but I kind of encouraged her just to stay home and rest up a little bit because it was just a couple days after she fell. Mm -hmm. So, there's probably some, three days. But anyhow, she she did feel like to come in tonight. So. Uh, Let's just lift her up and pray. Any other prayer requests here tonight? <coughs> yes. There's a guy over at the uh, building in that uh, Liberty Hospital, and uh, they pulled the plug, and it's just a matter of time. Uh, they don't know how long he's going to have or anything like that. Right. Who? What's his, uh, you, you, what's his name? Uh, Robert. Robert. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Just want to be led. I have to. I'm going to change my. I was out at my farm, and that's. I got stuck because the guy had to meet me out there at almost six o'clock, and yeah. so he was giving me an estimate. I have to get several estimates on putting in city water versus a well. I'm going to keep my well, but I also want city water inside. Right. And I have renters out there, and so I got stuck out there with another estimate guy, and that's why I was late to church. Yes. So. <laughs> so anyway, I just. Pray that the Lord will guide me to the right person. Okay. Yes. And that they'll yes. be honest. Yes, Lord. With that's, me. That's Thank you, right Father. Yeah. Yes, Lord. It's hard to find it, it really, people, especially when you're really a single is. woman. It, it you know? is whether you're a married man or single. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it is tough to find honest people. So it is. This world is pretty corrupt. Anybody else? Yes. Anybody else? Father God, let's lift up all these needs yes, right Lord. now. Father, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, Thank Father, Jesus. I pray that you move on every one of these situations, you, Father. Jesus. That you give us wisdom, Lift Father, and give us favor, Father. Father Help us, Lord, and, and lead us, guide us by your Spirit, Father. We, we pray you, for those who need touches in their, their bodies, bodies Father, you, Father. That you just move on behalf of them, Father. We curse sickness, disease, infirmity. We give you praise and glory, Father. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Father, I pray that you give us a wisdom we need to deal with things in life. Jesus. And Lord, that you also thank you, give us wisdom to talk Jesus. to other people, Father. Lead us, guide us by your spirit, Father. Help us to be bold to do what you say, Father. Not pushy, Father, but just bold, Father, to do what you say. And I give you praise and glory. Father, just show yourself mighty, Father. You said the goodness of God draws people to repentance. So, Father, we just ask that you show yourself mighty in every one of these situations, Father, by your power and by your might. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Father, I pray you take this word we've received tonight, Father, and grant it deep within our hearts, Father, 
Help us to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. Help us to be strong in you and the power of your might, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give us boldness, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Oh, you're worthy, Lord, you're mighty God. Yes. Use us, I pray, Father. In Jesus' name, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God's good. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody Lord. here need prayer?